Hey there, welcome back uh, to my YouTube channel. And uh, this video is going to be about the uh, pre-flight checklist that uh, I recommend you use and I use uh, when getting ready to fly the um, Apprentice S15 uh, E ready to fly airplane from E-Flight. <clears throat> now a checklist is important. <clears throat> I always have a copy of the checklist with me. I won't say that I use it every time because I've been flying this airplane for 10 years, <laughs> okay? Um, so, when you when you get a lot of experience with this airplane, and I'm gonna say you fly it, you know, once a week for the next year, then you'll have enough experience that you may remember most of the checklist. But first starting out, have a copy of the checklist. You'll see the checklist appear one step at a time at the bottom of the screen. What I recommend you do is watch the video through uh, one time <clears throat> so you can see everything as it as it happens then go back and watch a video a second time and pause the air the the video to write down each step of the checklist <clears throat> okay so I've got the checklist written down here on paper and I'm gonna uh, read it some I'll uh, probably uh, um, uh, like I said I think I know most of it but I um, this is a checklist where you would start when you first get to the field. And in fact, um, somewhere in the future of videos, I plan to actually run through this checklist on camera at the field. But uh, so the first step in my checklist uh, is to check the cabin components. So you got a number of things in the cabin. You got the switch. Uh, uh, the switch is off. Um, the ESC is not loose, not moving around. You've got the wire here for the uh, um, wing servos. And uh, when you pull that wire out, you should also check to make sure that the uh, um, leads plugged into the uh, receiver is in good shape. Um, remember, my ESC was a bit loose, uh, so I put it down with the Velcro. I'm not with a Velcro, but with a tie wrap, and so that's still looking good. <clears throat> um, you've got the uh, uh, two servos in here, the nose wheel servo, um, ha I'm, I'm sorry, the nose wheel push arm attached to this servo, the rudder servo, is uh, got a clevis on it, so you got to make sure the clevis is good. <clears throat> um, the other two push rods are z bends so they're not going to come off. But you do want to make sure that the um, um, arms, uh, the screw, you can just visually look at the screw to make sure they're down nice and tight. Um, <clears throat> so the, I think that's, uh, let's see. Yeah, um, the keeper is really important to make sure it's not hitting, going to hit the uh, arm, um, the 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 uh, silicone keeper that holds the clevis in place. Um, by the way, the clevis is something uh, extremely important. That nose wheel um, clevis there takes a lot of beating if you land on the nose first. If you don't get the flare right and the, the wheels should always touch before the nose. But I've seen a lot of students not flare quick enough and it just hits nose first. So that takes a that little plastic pin in that clevis for the nose wheel takes a beating. So be sure to have a spare on hand. Uh, this is the spare. I always ha have one and carry it to the field. Um, so you can see the uh, part number PKZ4421. Uh, it comes with four um, clevises in there with the nylon keepers already attached. And so <clears throat> that's an important um, spare part that you should have. Um, so, uh, let's see, I think that's everything inside the cabin. Um, looks good in there. So the next step would be to start at the front of the aircraft <clears throat> and uh, make sure the prop is tight, um, good and tight, uh, not loose in any way. The front spinner is on, that's good. And, um, by the way, having a spare, <laughs> this prop is probably the, um, maybe even the first item to get uh, some wear and tear on it. 
Uh, so I always recommend having carrying a spare prop to the field because if you um, mess up a takeoff or landing and the prop hits the ground just lightly, it's okay. If you if you really ding in a landing and you ding the nose wheel, you might ding the prop at the same time. The aircraft flips over while the prop is spinning. It's one going to get dirty. It's two um, going to get bent. And if you when you first fly the aircraft, listen to how that prop sounds, and it sounds nice and clean and smooth. If it doesn't sound nice and clean and smooth after a ding on the ground, you might want to change it. These are fairly cheap, and uh, so that's the prop that uh, uh, comes with it. There's the part number, and uh, it's a standard, well, I won't call it a standard uh, prop. The hole in the center of this prop is made to fit the um, prop adapter that's on the front. Some of the third party ones won't have as big a hole and you might have to ream it out and that's always a challenge because uh, if you don't ream it out right it doesn't uh, spin correctly. <clears throat> so the prop is on straight. The main wheels um, are um, straight across. Um, the um, wheel collars are on nice and tight but you should check that every time. Um, the first time you get to the field and before you fly for the first time, you do a little bit more detailed inspection, including that. <clears throat> so that the nose wheel is straight, um, and it is. The other thing with the nose wheel, you should be able to move the servo inside. As you can see, I'm moving that servo inside. Okay. And, um, if, the, if you can move, and I'm grabbing it right here where this uh, little spring coil is here. If you can move that and it doesn't move the um, servo arm, then you don't have the screw in tight enough. And it uh, will not take off very well if that screw is loose. Okay. <clears throat> um. So, the rubber band posts. Uh, every time I take it to the field, the first time I fly, I check these rubber band posts because they can come loose. Um, so you, you make sure that the, the four posts are in there and good and tight, not moving around. <clears throat> the four clevises are good. Um, uh, the, I'm sorry, the, you already checked the one clevis in here. You got two clevises in the back, so the other four clevises are the two back here, that's good and tight. And we'll get to the wing clevises in, in just a minute. <clears throat> uh, the horizontal stabilizer. Um, you should just visually inspect that there's no gap between the horizontal stabilizer and the fuselage right where it joins there. Um, this should not be loose or moving around. If it is, you might need to check the screws in the bottom, but uh, that's good and tight. That the, um, both the vertical stabilizer and the rudder are straight, the horizontal stabilizer uh, and the elevator are straight. So you got the both the sta stabilizer and the elevator, the stabilizer and the rudder uh, all visually checked. Um, the other thing you have to inspect too is this hinge is just a piece of plastic there, okay, and it's it's solid on the top, there's a slit there, it's solid here, there's a slit there, and it's solid there. So it's solid plastic with two slits in it. That can come off. The same is true of the um, uh, elevator. You need to make sure that none of these are broken and uh, are good and strong, not any problems to it. It's not hard to replace those if they are. Um, I don't usually carry a spare, so if that goes, I'll have to wait and get another one. Um, okay, so last thing, the switch was off, okay? The next thing is to check the wing it's sitting over here. So the, the first thing I like to look at on the wing is the center joint, okay? This center joint is uh, being held on by two pieces of tape and these plastic things, so they have to be in good shape, okay? So the center joint looks good, it's nice and tight, it's not moved. Um, 
probably wouldn't have moved by now yet. Um, and then you check to make sure that the hinge for the aileron, um, there's basically tape uh, reinforcing it, but there's a web of, of, um, of the uh, foam that acts as the hinge, but there is some reinforcement by tape on the top. That looks good. The um, control horns are not loose, they're nice and tight. The push rods are nice and tight. The clevises are in place on uh, both, both sides. Again, control horn, clevis, um, servo arm, all look good on both sides. Um, this tape here that covers the, the uh, wiring from the uh, servo out to the center of the wing um, is not just for decoration, it is to protect it. So if that starts coming out, you should uh, try and uh, get that fixed. Uh, you can use packing tape or something like that to hold it down. Um, so, uh, wing looks in good shape. <clears throat> the next step would be to mount the wing. Okay, I'm going to stand up here and mount the wing. So the next thing to do is to, I'm down, I'm up here. The next thing I want to make sure you can see this well. I'm going to hook the two um, servo leads into the Y harness that uh, goes to the um, aileron channel and the receiver. And when you push these two in, um, on one side of, of the um, lead on the wing, there's you can see three metal tabs. When you push that in, and you uh, obviously you have to match the um, colors of the wire, but when you push that in, it's all the way in when you can't see that metal anymore right there. <clears throat> okay, so that's in good shape. I like to tuck the uh, Y harness down in the little hole here next to the uh, speed controller so it won't interfere with anything. Okay. And then I've got my eight uh, rubber bands here. I'm going to use the red ones, uh, but you can use whatever kind of color you like. So when I put a rubber band on, I start at the front, pull it from the back, pull it over my finger like that, okay? And that allows me to hold it and make the tension nice and even before I let it go down on the wing. So um, I'll do this side, again, holding it up. Okay, now that the first two are on, I double check and make sure that the marks, the black sharpie marks that I have on the fuselage and the wing are aligned before I put the next two on. You can go front to back or back to front, but always try to go over your finger, get the tension uh, correct, and continue. Okay. Having that tension in the rubber band even will save you uh, a broken rubber band. Probably many broken rubber bands because the tension should be nice and even. It also um, um, will be stronger to hold the wing evenly. Okay, two more rubber bands to go. The marks still look good. the tension is right all eight rubber bands are in place okay <clears throat> so let's see so the wing is mounted the wing alignment looks good the next step would be to test the battery grab my box of batteries here I'll pull out a battery 
And I, ha I have both kinds of testers here. This is just the tester without the horn on it. This is the tester with the horn on it. Since I'm going to use the horn at some point, I'll run the test with the horn so you can hear it again. This horn is set for 11.1 .1 volts, meaning it's um, uh, 3.7 volts per cell. And uh, so I'm going to plug this in, looking at the maximum or the total voltage and then the sum of each three. Okay, so we got uh, 12.6, 420, 418. 419 okay and it shows high and low and and the delta being two okay so a delta of two is acceptable for me if it was more than two I would probably balance it um, but uh, okay so now I'm going to leave that in place okay because I'm going to put it in the airplane <clears throat> now I'm not going to put it in the airplane probably for the first two flights uh, but for most future flights after that, I'll probably have it in. Um, you'll see that uh, out on the field. The, the first two flights are, are, are what I call maiden flights. They're going to be very short in duration. The subsequent flights will have longer and use most of the battery. Okay, so let's. Um, the voltage is fully charged. Uh, if it was less than 12.4, I would probably recharge it. Um, um, if uh, if you've used it once and then stopped, that's okay. If it gets down to 12.0, I'd probably still fly with it. Um, <clears throat> but below 12.0, I probably won't fly with a battery. Okay, so I've got uh, black Velcro on the bottom of the battery. And I'm going to make sure that the uh, battery sits all the way to the rear. That was the CG we wanted. Okay, and then I'm going to tuck the uh, voltage checker down in the hole here. So it won't be in the way of closing the hatch. Okay. Battery's all the way to the rear. I can now strap on the uh, Velcro. Velcro straps are in place, and the uh, the two wires are going to easily meet. That's not a problem, but I'm not going to plug it in right now. Um, because, well, I actually could leave that open. I don't know why I'm closing it. Because while that is sitting there, we're going to check the, the uh, next checklist item is um, the transmitter check. So the battery's in place but not plugged in. That's because you always want to turn on the transmitter before you plug in the battery. Okay. Oh, anyway, I get this uh, um, um, transmitter case from Amazon uh, and you'll see the, the details at the bottom of the screen here somewhere. Um, it's handy. It keeps it nice and clean. If it's banging around in the back of your car, it's not going to hurt the transmitter. You should have it in something protective. This is a nice hard made specifically for this transmitter and uh, works well. So, transmitter check. Um, it is off. Going to leave it off for a minute. The throttle is all the way back. The spring on this side looks good. Uh, I want the rates on low rates, especially for takeoff. Now, for the um, flight mode, all the way back away from you is beginner. In the middle is intermediate. To the front is uh, advanced uh, or experienced. Um, even I probably never use experienced for takeoff. I'll probably use intermediate for most of the takeoffs that I do. Um, I can. I mean, it's no big deal. You can. Um, if you're just beginning, use a beginner mode. If you've got some experience, go ahead and use the uh, intermediate mode. If you experience to me means you've been flying this thing a year, okay? Every week for a year too. Um, you've taken it out at least 50 times and you've got some experience with it. Um, the th the uh, 
throttle arm disarm switch is in the disarm position. Okay, I'm going to turn it on and uh, make sure that the light is glowing orange. It's not flashing or red or anything. So the battery's good. Okay. So normally at this point, and you'll see me at the field probably do this, I would leave it on and plug in the battery. But since we're not going to go flying in the shop here, I'm going to turn this off. Okay. So um, the... Uh, that's the, all the checklist. Um, thank you for watching. This was a longer video than I thought it'd be because I was explaining a lot. But uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.